How's it going? <laughs> going good. Bit of a stressful morning. My car broke. I uh, wouldn't start this morning, so I've just oh had to go out. Oh my god. Yeah. It's it's an, it's a, like a it's a nice car, but I think the guy that sold me um, a battery last year, um, he just said they're dodgy batteries. So oh. I just had to fork out two hundred and fifty dollars to start oh. my car and get. Oh my god! I had that recently as well. Actually, it was, it's like it's a p- real pain in the ass because one day the car is fine, the next day you turn the key, nothing, and that's <laughs> yeah. it. So you just got to got to get a new battery. Same thing. And my car is only like a year old. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. Actually, I don't know. There's something cool about running. Like you know, it's, it, people like different things, I guess. So that's uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just being totally sarcastic, so yeah. Yeah. So anyway, how are you? Are you doing well? Yeah, really good. Yeah, really busy. Yeah. Is it? Um, nice. Life is life is amazing over here. Yeah. When was the last time we saw each other? Cheapers. Uh, <laughs> and- it's going It's going back a long, long time. I'm like one day in a club somewhere in London, no doubt. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, um, then, yeah. And that, yeah. yeah that, and I just literally took hold of my health and fitness and thought, you know, what are my goals? I want to compete. And it was just a real whirlwind, but it was yeah. obviously meant to be because it's something I was really passionate about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy. It was a crazy transformation. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what? What's this? She's like on stage in our winning competitions. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, in 16 weeks, I placed uh, third in the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was Oh, uh, classic stuff. Well, cool, Kelly. We we're flipping excited to chat to you because um, you yeah. know. Well, first of all, it's just nice to talk to you and actually hear the full story, like in person, you know. And uh, and it's it's nice to reconnect too. And um, you know, it's especially someone like I feel like I feel proud like of you and and proud to be your buddy as well because you know you've done so much and achieved so much, which is really cool. And it's not. I think there'll be a lot of people that like we both know that would like to hear the story and, and everything too, you know? Um, yeah. and- <laughs> <laughs> up, uh, great guys. How's it going, my man? Are you buddy? <laughs> awesome, my buddy. How about you, my man? Yeah, very good. Thanks, bud. Very good. <laughs> Just uh, sitting from my little kitchen here in Portugal. So, uh, yeah, I enjoyed a good good little walk on the beach this morning. And how about you, Vad? Oh, what a way to start the day! Hey, it's such a <laughs> get the wind in the hair and uh, clear the head before you start uh, start your day. Great stuff. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, we had a great uh, guest this week, uh, Kelly Rennie, uh, and uh, yeah, we're really excited to to get into her chat. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you know, just a quick little intro to Kelly. Uh, her and I actually um, friends from you know we go back quite a quite a long time and we met in London many many years ago and uh, these days uh, Kelly's the owner and founder of Busy Mum Fitness and she's been like a sort of ex bodybuilding champ um, a physique model um, and you know very successful businesswoman now you know she's also uh, written. Um, a couple of books, as well as uh, contributes to a lot of uh, really well-known um, websites in terms of uh, writing articles for them. Uh, she's a cover girl, as well as a pre- and postnatal expert. So definitely a very accomplished woman, and actually someone I'm just so proud of, you know. And uh, it's just so nice seeing her grow in so well over all these years. It's really, really, really inspiring. Yeah, it's yeah. awesome, and she was she was great to chat to, and we got into a variety of interesting topics, uh, including uh, her panic attacks that she suffered with for a long time, and uh, anxiety and depression. Uh, we talk about vision boards and how to have a create a vision for your life, uh, weight loss and weight gain. Uh, we talk about confidence and how to sell yourself and your personal brand and your your business. Uh, what it's like to be a single mom running a business. Uh, and we also got into a number of other interesting things, but it was a really great chat. Um, but just moving on to a bit of housekeeping, uh, we've got, uh, we thought today was a good day to discuss some of our plans coming up and uh, we've got some exciting stuff coming up. Hey, Gareth. 
Yeah, definitely. I'm going to finally see you in the flesh, my man. In like, <laughs> yeah, uh, finally. Yes, just uh, over a month's time, uh, we're going to both be heading to America to a podcast conference. It's actually the biggest podcast conference in the world. And uh, we just can't wait, well, mostly to see each other, you know, and just to yeah, sort of totally. connect again in person, but then also to just find out much more about the podcast world and meet meet other like fellow podcasters and, you know, just find out what's going on in the industry. For sure. Yeah. yeah we, we, what a lot of people don't realize, hey, is that we haven't actually seen each other in the flesh since we started the podcast, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's super crazy, man. It's, uh, it's, it, yeah, but it's, it's also quite cool. Like how you can set something up like this, you know, and you, you literally on the other side of the world and, you know, where this is episode 37, I think that's coming up now. And it's just really crazy to think that, you know, it started like 37 weeks ago and then um, <laughs> it's been such a hit for you and me. You know what I mean? We love doing it. Yeah, totally, man. Yes. So, I mean, it's going to be a long flight for me to get there. And I think, uh, geez, I'm going to probably have a bit more jet lag than than you will, I reckon. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bit of a struggle. But that's, uh, you know, just by, I think, getting the energy from seeing you and getting into that vibe, it's going to be great. But uh, yeah, I reckon you, you might, I might be a little bit down in the dumps when I arrive, but you know, to be honest, that's, that's probably not even close to the kind of stuff that, uh, Kelly went through. Hey. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and we talk about this obviously in the chat with her and Kelly suffered, you know, like through in the early sort of parts of her life with, uh, you know, serious sort of panic attacks and anxiety as well as, um, depression but she managed to turn it all around and that's the really, really inspiring part. You know, she, I think she ended up sort of reading a book and that just gave her a different sort of perspective and insights into, you know, how to view her life and how to change things around. And these days she's a super successful businesswoman and you can just, you know, see it and hear it in her voice when she speaks to you. And, the other really cool thing is that she is more than happy to show her vulnerability. And I think that is such a powerful thing. And, you know, you and I were also discussing this like before um, we're sort of doing this intro now. And one of the things that is a key theme with a lot of our guests is vulnerability and, and the, mm. the fact that they're able to and willing to talk about things that that have been difficult for them in their lives. And I think the importance of that is very, very high. And people it just it people should should talk about things more, you know. We need to normalize these things more and because we all do suffer from the same sort of things. And like what's the <clears> point in like keeping them to yourselves? It's just like be open and honest about like how you're yeah. feeling because because it just it just makes it easier when, when you are able to communicate. Um, and yeah, no, the other thing, you know, and, you know, she talks about is her confidence. And that was so great to see, wasn't it, Craig? Yeah, for sure. But, you know, just, uh, you know, talk about the vulnerability, Gareth. She, you know, she talks about how she'd lie there and feel as though her heart might stop. And she would just be like hoping that it, that she would, her heart wouldn't stop that night. And, you know, that, it, it you know, she really got, she she got gave us the lowdown on what it's really like you know to to go through that and have genuine genuine fear of like being outside and and being around others and it's it's just crazy how like you said how amazing the, her turnaround was and how, to see her confidence like you said and she totally is and it's it's amazing cuz nowadays she she speaks with such confidence such ease about her business and herself uh and what it's like to run a business uh from home uh, and with kids, uh, and being a, a single mum, you know, she's, uh, but she's just got this, um, air of grace about her and, and confidence the way she does things. And that was really inspiring. She has the certain understanding of what her skills are. And she just knows that through her, with her skill set that she can help others. And it comes from such a genuine place. And one of her goals is to actually help, um, 10,000 women. 
uh, over the next uh, the course of the I can't remember how long it was now. Yeah, I just think it's like you know moving forward. She's the next sort of year, wants to moving help. forward. Yeah, yeah, ten thousand people. Yeah. But it's just really amazing, and um, you know, we and the way she speaks about it, you just have no doubt that she'll she'll get there. Hey, guys. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and you know, the most one of the most inspiring things was like you touched on it is just the fact that she is a single mom and she's been able to do this. Like, I I can't even begin to imagine how difficult that must be. You know, I guess mm. uh, first of all, I'm a guy, so I don't uh, you know. I guess I don't, don't claim to know that. Yeah, no, I don't claim to know that. But also, <laughs> you know, just just looking after, I guess, myself is is a is a lot of hard work. I feel, <laughs> and having kids um, as well is just, uh, you know, I mean, it's 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 just really great to see, and it's like inspiring to hear, and it just gives you sort of the the kind of oomph that we need. You know what I mean? To go and do things yourself, and and not let anything hold you back, because there's no excuse really. Yeah, you know? exactly. Um, and and yeah, it was just a really great chat. Um, super happy that uh, we managed to uh, get Kelly on the podcast as a guest, and uh, no doubt uh, there will be a lot of value in there for for anyone really. And uh, yeah, I think now's a good time for us to hear what it's like for Kelly Rennie to be ridiculously human. Cool stuff. Well. Good morning there, Kelly Rennie from the Gold Coast in Australia. How's it going? How are you? I'm fantastic, thank you. Uh, it's a cold morning here, but the sun's still out. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure cold doesn't really mean cold, eh? let's be honest. <laughs> Actually, no, it doesn't. It will probably be like 25 or 26 degrees today or something like that. But, yeah, no, probably not cold. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've got my I've got my jumper on too, so it is, it is chilly. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the coldest morning we have, but I'm looking outside and it's beautiful uh, sunshine. So I can't complain <laughs> after living in the UK for 10 years. Yeah, tell me about <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's nothing. It's opposite to the UK. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we didn't ha even have that temperature today, and we're going into summer. So, you know, it's uh, <laughs> I don't have any sympathy for you guys there in the Gold Coast. <laughs> I'm Thanks, sorry. You you couldn't you couldn't pay me to go back there. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I I totally get it. And this year has been horrendous. Like literally. It's been so cold the whole year. It's crazy. But like, you know, the last two weeks, it's kind of changed and you and you completely forget about it. You're like, oh, cool. Yeah, London's good. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you forget about the 10 months of winter. It's crazy. <laughs> no, I, I, I did my time. I did my jail time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did indeed. Yeah. So, how, yeah. How has uh, how has your day been? Like, have you been up too much? I know it's pretty early. Like, we had a little chat earlier on as well before the chat. You've been up to a bit of exercise. Yeah. Um, yeah. I try and start my morning off every morning with exercise. Um, I have um, obviously two girls, four and five year old. Um, my my ex and I we do week on week off. So on my weeks off, I try and uh, get up early um, and go and do things outside um, because nature for me is something that is very healing um, and it is a bit colder in the morning. But yeah, I generally try and run the stairs or go for a walk on the beach because we're blessed to have some of the most beautiful coastlines in the world here. So we may as well go and go in and enjoy it. Tell me about for it. Sure. There's something very like just calming and no matter how you've been feeling throughout the day or, or, or whatever it may be, when you go down to the beach and the sun's going down or coming up, it's just a, it's sort of, it's a reset, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I, I know this is going to sound a bit weird, but um, I always had a vision of um, a vision of the sea and a vision of a break. Um, where I would be and where I live and where I walk every morning from Nobby's Beach to Broad Beach is my vision. Oh, yeah, cool. it, it's like it's like a home, you know, like this is where I'm meant to be. And, the, and you know, when you work so much, you know, it's to go to the beach and have that peace in the morning or the mm. afternoon is is one of the most healing things and it's free. Of course. You know, like, 
Yeah. What, what we have here is free and, you know, when you are really stressed out, it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do? Go and ground yourself, take yourself to the beach, you know, get outside and we are very blessed to have that here on the Gold Coast. So, yeah, ho- home is where, it, where it's meant to be, which is here. Yeah, yeah that's so yeah. cool. Oh, are you far yeah. from the beach where you live now? Uh, yeah, so I'm 10 minutes inland, um, so I would love to be on the beach, but um, my daughter just started to go to school this year. I still can't even believe I've got kids. Um, <laughs> and like a, a daughter that goes to school, but she, she actually goes to school in a forest, cool. uh, which is in, in the hinterland. So, yeah, I got told about this beautiful um, Steiner Bay school when I got here. Um, so it's about 16 minutes from my house, and it's uh, in the hinterland. And it's beautiful. It's a very magical feeling school. And mm. I having her there is just amazing. So cool. I, wouldn't you just love, like, as a five-year-old to yeah. show up to school and it's in a forest and there's creeks. And, <laughs> you know, the other, week, the other week there was a koala outside of her room and they just got told to go outside <laughs> and draw the koala. So it's oh, really, cool. it's really cool. Mm. That is really awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. If it, like I can just picture like Peter Pan almost that sort of setup. You know, it's like <laughs> yeah. idyllic. Yeah, for a kid. well, it, it is like the school sort of goes around in a circle, and their their prep area um, has got a rock pool around it. So in summer, they oh, just cool. turn the water on, and the kids can take their swimmers. <laughs> and as long as they've got a towel, they're allowed to play in the water at lunchtime in a rock pool in the forest. It's like, oh my god, why didn't I go to the school no when I was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh, really cool. So cool. Um, they've made it all about, you know, obviously there's a curriculum, but it, it is very much also about that aspect of, of you know, the, a child's mind as well. And I think for a kid to be immersed in nature from a young age and to respect it and understand yes. how it all works and, you know, be really part of your schooling is mm. obviously super valuable for, for the future for them oh. as well, you know. Like as a five-year-old, you know, her coming outside telling me what to do with things. And, you know, the other day she came home and she's like, puts her hands on her hips. She says, do we recycle, mum? And I'm like, yeah. She's like, are you sure we do? And she's like, go on about, you know that if we don't recycle, do you know how many things we can make plastic things with? And I'm like, wow, okay, all right. Awesome. That is but, so yeah, cool. So- a very different um, learning and, you know, they can walk into the forest at lunchtime and go on like a, a little tour or learn things. So it is really cool. Yeah. Wow. To have that. That's so yeah. amazing. I like, I just love that, you know, like bringing everything back to its roots and, and simplifying things and, you know, like hands on mm. teaching and, and learning is just amazing. We actually spoke to these really inspiring kids on our podcast um about four or five months ago um from this this company called nalu clothing uh, dolly and finn and they go to the green school in bali and i don't know if you oh, if wow. you've heard of it before but I've it's heard like, of it, yeah. mm. i mean it sounds i guess fairly similar to to the school your daughter yeah. goes to you know same i guess kind of concepts and it's it's just such a great way to teach kids well, I went in there on Friday and um, the mothers could go in like, or the parents could go in 20 minutes before and we all had to sit in a circle and the teacher says, right, everyone, where are your engines at? And all the kids put their hand on their hearts oh. and they're like, and they said, right, if your engine is running fast, I want you to breathe in and breathe out. Wow. And all the kids, ah. Wow, that's so cool. No way. <laughs> Yeah, and they're all going, ah, and they're like, right, if the engine is running fast, I want you to do a push-up. And you do a push-up and let out all your energy, and then you come back to your engine, and you feel your engine, are you okay, until you breathe. So all all these kids are going, ah. <laughs> but you imagine as adults, you know, how are you feeling right now? Is your heart feeling fast? Take a big deep breath in, yeah. out, and breathe. Yeah. As all as others, as stressed out entrepreneurs, mm. as humans, take a big deep breath in and out. And these five year olds are being yeah. taught from a young oh, age. So very good. And I, I was yeah. just like, Wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So amazing. We we've mm. discussed this recently as well about like education and I think we've certainly been thinking more about it and like exactly what you say. You often learn like how to 
memorize, you know, certain things at, at general, you know, general normal schools. But you don't always learn things like, you know, how do you like get rid of anxiety when you're feeling the feeling of anxiety or mindfulness or cooking or, you know, all these things that are actually have to be done every day. Uh, We don't like learn that stuff, you know. No, and that that's part of their learning. Like the other day, they just had cardboard box day where all of them had to bring in cardboard boxes (laughs) and the whole entire day from prep to year 12, everyone's got outside and just made things out of cardboard boxes. I was like, just how cool, like, you know, like spaceships, rockets, cars, you know, and I was like, wow, I want a cardboard box day. I want to see what I could make. (laughs) I want to go back to school now. (laughs) Yeah, I want to go back to school. (laughs) Take a second school. Yeah, Yeah. tell me about it. Yeah, yeah. So, and and also like today is, is it kind of like, a usual day for yourself like in terms of you know you don't have the kids or is that does it how often does uh, yeah, that happen so, during the week uh yeah so we do week on week off oh, week so on, wow. on a week yeah week on week off um and that's quite new but you know we both want to play mummy and daddy um i still talk to my kids every day um via facetime which is quite good but my job my job is very demanding um you know we have not only doubled the business since October but even in the last week we've doubled numbers again so wow. Wow. I I have to really stay on top of my game um, and um, so the week off is when I really nail down you know with my business coach or myself and and really um, get things stuck in you know to to my goal because I have a big goal you know I, I would really like to um, you know, my goal is to change the lives of, you know, 10,000 mums in the next year, which is a really big goal. But I truly wow. believe that um, I have, I'm more than capable of doing it. Um, you know, we've been around five years now with my business. And now it's about, you know, leveling it up to where we, where, where our vision is. So just awesome. got to keep on top of those goals. Wow. Oh, what good to have yeah. audacious goals and to and just to go for them you know that's that's what it's all about isn't it yeah and it, it, it's um it, it's my it's not just a passion but it's also I I always knew that I was meant here to do something really big you know and that is my you know you could have asked someone when I was 19 you know I mean at the time you know everyone, oh you know Kelly's going to be on TV or she's going to do this or and I didn't know quite what it was and from quite a young age I, I always had like a a microphone on my on my vision board and I remember <laughs> even before even before I was in the fitness industry someone sat me down and I said I just I want this one you know entity to be able to provide things for everyone wow. you know and that was like a vision of having like this one stop cool. shop and I just didn't exactly know what it was until, you know, uh, five years ago when I started Busy Mum Fitness. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. So you had like a vision board when you were really, really young. Uh, oh, I probably started it more so when I was like 26. I mean, I've always have felt the need to, I've always had that belief system that that was always going to happen. I just didn't know how, like, you know, I tried a bit of acting, I tried a bit of, um, all these different things but I just knew that you know being num- not number one but being very good at what I was going to do was going to create mm. that yeah. you know like speaking, speaking for me was something that I was so scared of but then suddenly um, you know like a couple of years ago uh, it was the Scotland Fitness Expo wrote to me and said you know we'd love to have you as one of our keynote speakers I was oh, like wow, wow you know it's happening um, and then I've ended up speaking at every single fitness expo around the world now, you wow, know, UK, sweet. Scotland, Australia, uh, New Zealand was a big one for me last year. Um, so wow. I've really achieved, you know, being able to stand up at a, at a fitness expo and know exactly what I'm talking about and, and um, fulfill that dream. Yeah. yeah. Wow. If you can hold a crowd in a topic that you're interested in and good at and – be asked to do it time and again that's really much testament to you like being a sort of a leader in your profession and or uh, sort of an expert in in your field and being good at it so yeah that's pretty awesome and do you enjoy the public speaking side of it 
I love it. I crap my pants beforehand, <laughs> but um, I, I, yeah, I love it. Like when I'm on stage, I just is like this is where I'm meant to be, and I would lot to. I would love to do a lot more of it because. Our program's never been sold as a buy now as such. We literally speak to all of our mums. Yeah. So, you know, from four or five years ago, I before I even hired anyone for a year and a half, I used to talk to like five to ten mums every day for like so, 20 to 30 minutes. Wow. You know, and I have probably, I feel, done the most research on mums as an individual mm-hmm than any other person and if I have a mum in front of me even if they start talking I will know exactly what's going on in their life how they can deal with it what their obstacles are beat their objections and really get into their minds because I I I have seen it hand in hand you know every day and Mm -hmm. this is why you know there is no doubt that our program will succeed in what we want to do because we are we have created it you know, by the mums, for the mums. Um, so it's um, – and by a busy mum as well. I'm super <laughs> yeah. busy. <laughs> so, yeah, it, big goals. But, look, I just think, you know, where I was, you know, 11 years ago to now, I just think anything's possible. Yeah, yeah I really do. Yeah. yeah that's wow. so cool. It's, it's so inspiring, like, just hearing you have these goals and, uh, mm. you know, want to achieve such cool things because you – you just you're actually wanting to do them because you want the better for other people, you know, and and specifically mm-hmm. other moms, and that's that's such a good place to to begin, you know, because mm-hmm. if it, if you begin in a good place like that, generally you're going to be quite successful, I'd say. Yeah, and it, like to be honest, the transition was quite challenging as such because I had gone from you know, the egotistical fitness model world, you know, mm. being about, you know, and let's step back again. I was never a model, all right? Like if someone had told me that I would be on stage in a bikini one day, I would have freaked <laughs> out. Like I, my body, my self body image, all about me, that that was like, and so when I achieved that, and then my first photo shoot was with the muscle and fitness um, photographer. And um, I was like, I'm just so nervous. How do I stand? What do I look like? Like, you know, where do I put my wow. hands? Yeah. But it, it all became natural. So it was about me for the first few years. And then I realized that my business wasn't going to be the best that it could be if it was based around me. Mm. And then I just thought, right, the more I focus on others, the more I make this about my mums, the more successful my business would be. So that transition was probably I'll be a, a, like it, it was hard because suddenly it's not about you and what you look like and then I was like right we needed to do a full change around and yes people maybe aspire to you know you know have a body or a fit body or, or that was like me but I wanted for me it's about the individual getting them their best the better body that they can have mm. you know um, and take that that society pressure off the whole instagram fit into kim kardashian's look or whatever because that's not realistic. yeah absolutely mm. for sure i think there's a lot of that living up to the you know trying to live up to something that's not necessarily anything close to what your true healthy fit body is you know and so much pressure around that obviously mm. uh which comes along with that so as, as a busy mom yourself what does a typical day look like for you um, uh, I get up early. Um, I try and get up at like five thirty. Um, the reason I do that is um, I got to get two kids ready by seven thirty. Um, I'm not the typical mum that makes cereal for breakfast. Like I, my kids have never had cereal or toast. Um, they've had it on that maybe like an odd occasion, but I make them breakfast. So like I'd either do like a protein pancake or eggs and might make them a smoothie. And now that my daughter um, has lunch, you know, once again, I have to make a bit of the food. Like it might be like chicken. Luckily she eats chicken and vegetables. So, you know, it, it's <laughs> like that. I also Monday, Wednesday and Friday do a live workout with my mums at seven in the morning. Wow. Um, that, cool. that can be, uh, it's only 12 minutes so on my on my long term support on my year long support program so i kind of get the kids ready and then 
I'll turn on my live camera and I'll do my live video. And that can involve me talking to Vea, trying to get her ready. Like, it's realistic. Like, there'll be washing yeah. in the background. There might be things on the floor. But what I'm trying to teach a mum is that we all have 12 minutes. Yeah, you know, mm. and if it means that my daughter's running past, like trying to put her clothes on, or Eden's jumping on me, <laughs> that, that's the reality because I am a yeah. single mum. Um, so, and um, then you know we're off to kindy and school, and then you know I literally try and fit my day in from nine till two thirty. So I literally work, you know, because something that's been quite challenging is is the whole entrepreneurial side and so I try and make sure that from three o'clock when the girls are home till they go to bed that I'm just present with them and that I'm not working mm. so I kind of you know head down bum up work from nine till three um, and just really try and nail out and that's yeah. helped me build a team of um, who work who help, who work with me so we've now got seven sales people, wow. um, you know, a Facebook lady. I've got a full-time VA wow. now. Um, I, cool. outsource, I outsource most of my work. Cool. Um, so you know, I've had to really build a team to be able to create this big vision. Mm. Wow. Wow. That's amazing. That's amazing listening yeah. to that. Wow. It's really, really yeah. inspiring. Um, yeah. So, so I mean, yeah. Let, let's, uh, you know, let's let's also, I guess, hear a bit more about, uh, you know, like who Kelly Rennie is. But at the same time, just to give the chat a, a little bit of context, um, we actually know each other from uh, London when you used to uh, live in London uh, many, many uh, moons ago, and uh, we basically like have probably only really met a, like. A, in, in nightclubs in London because <laughs> we all used to hang up hang out in the same sort of uh, group of people and, and go clubbing and that together so and it was really really strange and we were talking about this before the chat like you know like at one moment you know I remember you like out and about and then you know you kind of like went off the scene and then like two years later or whatever it was all of a sudden I see you like in magazines and winning like bodybuilding competitions and I'm like no way! Is what's happened? Yeah, like it's just, it's just <laughs> like this crazy, awesome transition, you know. So, so that's obviously, you know, how we know each other, and it's just been really cool seeing your amazing transformation and growth, like over the years. This is really, really, really inspiring. Like watching it from afar. So, congratulations for for everything you've done, um, and you know, okay. best of luck for you know for the future because it sounds amazing. Um, mm -hmm. But what we what we really like to know and like what our listeners like to know is like, you know, what kind of uh, has made you the person you are today. And uh, part of that is actually understanding a bit of your backstory, like where you come from and a little bit about your childhood, you know, and maybe your family and stuff. So you're obviously born in, in New Zealand. Um, mm -hmm. So do you just want to take us back on this uh, sort of journey sure. of who you are? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was born in New Zealand. I was born into a very strict um, Seventh-day Adventist home. Um, I went to a Christian school till I was 15. Um, Seventh-day Adventist basically means that you go to church on a Saturday. So I was kind of brought up with a fear of being doing things like drinking or getting your ears pierced and, wow. you know, all of that kind of thing. Um we then branched out uh, when I was 15 to an all-girls school, which was where I really flourished. You know, I was able to play sports, whereas as a child, uh, we didn't have any um, competitive sports. Um, but probably even as well, that's when I, I discovered all the things that I wasn't allowed, and I, I actually turned that on quite a heavy side, you know, because I didn't understand it. Um, so I got, I was very, a big drinker from 15 to 22. Um, I also love sport. I was like a, a balance, you know, as you, every teenager does, you want to <laughs> experience. Um, so I actually did five years. Um, I um, but I love, I always love sport. Um, uh, my twin sister, uh, was a Canterbury rower. So we were both very competitive. Um, wow. I, 
I did eat a lot. Um, <laughs> when I was 18, 19, uh, the alcohol was quite heavy. The McDonald's would have been about five to <laughs> eight times a week. Wow. And wow. my ass, yeah. And, and <laughs> probably at my heaviest, I was, you know, good size, 15, 14, 15. Um, and, yeah, I, I... I started to be quite unhappy and there were a few pivotal moments within, you know, that area where I started to lose weight and made long side my house got affected. Um, I'd always had slight issues during my life and I never knew why, um, what was going on in my head. And as an adult now, I do understand. Um, I was quite an angry child. I don't know why. Um, and then... In my, I think I was 20, uh, I was diagnosed with anxiety and depression, mm. um, just suffering from panic attacks. Um, and I was also losing a lot of weight then. Um, I probably lost about 20 kgs in a year. Wow. So I was went from, I think, about um, even more than that. I think I was about 70, and then I went to about 46 kgs. Wow. Um, so wow. by that. Yeah, so by that stage, I was medicated. Um, 21, I was medicated to deal with. I actually thought that I was going schizophrenic, to be honest, and I, wow. I don't tell too many people this, but many people will know now. I actually put myself in a doctor's surgery and told them that I was schizophrenic. No way. Um, wow. Because my uncle was yeah, because my uncle was schizophrenic and I didn't know what was happening with my mind, but they said you wouldn't know that you're schizophrenic, Kelly. Um, <laughs> So that, that was, like, oh, okay, all right, well, what's happening to me then? Um, so I, I handled it with medication because that's what I was told to mm. do. You know, um, I was still drinking. I wasn't told to look after my nutrition. I wasn't told to look after. They were just like, hey, here's a pill. Um, wow. And during that time, I did stop exercising, um, and that's when I traveled. So I left New Zealand when I was 21. Mm. Um and I went to Australia for a month. I went to Thailand for three months, um, and I ended up in the UK. Um, the UK was great, but it was also not very good. You know, I was still drinking. I, I had a great job. Like I, I, you know, my passion for learning and 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 work was always there. So I was a personal banker. Um, when I got to London, I uh, then started working as a trader's assistant and um, executive PA for some of the top hedge funds within the world. Um, and I loved what I what I did, um, but my mind always very challenged me. Like um, it had got to a point in London where um, I don't I didn't really focus on health and fitness while I was there. Um, I got agoraphobic. I Many weekends I'd just stay in my vicinity because I was actually very scared of going outside. Wow. Um, they actually gave me the wrong medication in London. Um, wow. And only when I went back to New Zealand did they find out. And I'd sign, I remember signing up for a, a, like a panic attack course, and it took like six months to go through the system. Jeez. Goodness. And, um, there's a, a mental hospital in, um, near Wilsdon Green, and I remember I had to go to it. And I remember sitting there, you know, just thinking, what what does my life turn to? And I always remember thinking I'm never coming back, you know, like wow. I'm never coming back from what's going on in my head. Wow. And um, I remember sitting there in front of the nurse, and she's talking about, like, like the, what the flight and fight system is, and she started to get this big red rash on her chest. <laughs> talking, and she, she she was obviously a big, you know, like a, a step in because she's reading it from a piece of paper, and oh, that wow. was like that was like my stuff this moment. Like it was like mm. I just looked at her and I was like, "Are you having a panic attack?" <laughs> like oh. I, I. Yeah, what is, but you look as though, and Jeez. then I was just like, right, you know, I've got, to, I've got to take this into my own hands. So I slowly weaned myself off my medication um, because no one, I really didn't feel as though any doctor had me and um, this only model, you know, my house, my exercise, and, um, and, 
Yeah, it, it, when, you, when you're in that place in your head, it's a very scary place and that's probably why I'm very passionate about where I am today because at the age of 24, I just thought if I've got to live my life like this, I probably will be you know, locked up somewhere. Um, so when I was 25, I uh, met my m- met my ex, um, uh, Paul, and we moved up to Sheffield, and that's basically where I transformed my life. So I really got stuck into my exercise again, really got stuck into my health, and, you know, that I never suffered from a panic attack again after that. So it just was, a, an, you know, a pivotal moment of, okay, well, hold on. Let's get you back to basics. Yeah. You know, mm. let's get you back to exercise. Let get totally. let's get you back to you know, healthy eating. Let's get you back to sleep. Um, <laughs> you know, and I think sometimes we forget just and also now I've found out that I do have um mineral deficiencies in the MTFHR gene. Um, so what probably had happened in my early twenties, I was probably very very severely um, deprived of certain minerals, vitamin B, um, you know, iron, zinc, all the main things, and also uh, understanding the gene. And, you know, now I've been supplementing on the right supplements now for four years. And, and my daughter, I started noticing it in my daughter at the age of three as well. Um, and I got her tested because she started to have anger problems, uh, like really unexplainable tantrums. Um and she had the same thing as me, but I think wow. the most happy, the most amazing thing now is that I've like I'm gonna help her from a young age not have to go through what I went through. So it's pretty Goodness. pretty amazing. Huh. Yeah. So I always look for a cause, you know, like the way I look at a mum is say, what is the cause? You know, what's going on? You know, it's not just it is about health and fitness, but then I'm like, okay, well you know, where are your mineral levels are at, where are your triggers, Where what is this cause? Um, not, you know, because I was given a pill, but why didn't someone do a blood test on me? Mm. You know, like why didn't someone look for, you know, why didn't someone say, you know, are you exercising? Are you yeah. eating healthy? Are you getting sleep? It was like, okay, let's just give you a pill. Yeah. Now, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a doctor and I don't claim to be, please know that, but I just think that we should really be supporting people through those tough times and a bit came back after my second pregnancy but I was able to deal with it with the right situation you know with the right natural treatments um but that's probably made me made me very passionate about you know stepping in at 25 because it was a friend of ours um Carly Evans do you remember Carly Evans And uh, I got to Sheffield and um, she'd given me this book about goals and she made me read it. And I was just thinking, wow, you know, imagine if I just sat here and I wrote it down. Maybe maybe <laughs> I could. So I'm going down to Costa and got this coffee and I, I bought this diary and I thought, what is it that I want to be and what is it that I want to do? So wow. I put all this like, so I was like, right, I want to compete. And then I wrote down kellyrenny.com. In fact, I might even have cool. the diary front of me oh, oh wow. cool that's cool awesome um, I, yeah um somewhere here and um and i put kellyrenny.com mm. you know this is even before this is like 26 wow. and then on the next page i put how to uh, what are wow. the steps so the next oh, one good. was like call the best um trainer in sheffield <laughs> so the next day i got, I got on the phone wow. and i was like you know that's what you do and Literally within a couple of weeks, I was training, um, and obviously my body had always had that underlying, you know, athletic ability, mm. but I'd never taken it to that point. Um, and I really got stuck in and got out of my comfort zone. And I remember for two years straight, I used to get up at five thirty, six o'clock every morning and train and train. But that first year. Um, I think it was maybe like 14 weeks or 16 weeks. Um, I came second in Yorkshire, and then six weeks later, I came third in the UK. Wow, you know, that's... and I just it was it was one of these things. I'm like, oh my god, I'm I'm in I'm on stage in a bikini. <laughs> every every day. I envisioned. I I used to look at magazines. So I used to look at Jamie Eason, and and at the time. Uh, Paula told me to um, join bodybuilding.com and I'm looking at all these women and I just thought, right, 
if these girls can do it, so can I. And that's all. And when I used to power walk every morning, I used to do this thing where I shut my eyes and I used to vision myself shaking the the um, the judge's hand and taking my trophy. No way. <laughs> wow. And, How cool is yeah, that? Yeah. Shake you know, his hand, take the trophy. And that's what happened wow. on stage. I was like, shake Jeez. his hand, take the trophy. Um, that's visualization. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and it, and but I also wrote my diary every day, and it was like I created my life. And I remember showing Paul at the end of the year, and he was like, "Why didn't you write down that we were going to win lotto?" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> He's like "Everything I everything I wrote down basically happened." Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, wow. but maybe what you could take from that is it's it it's it was helping me step by step achieve it wasn't like okay i'm gonna do this it was like okay well this is my vision tomorrow i'm gonna do this to achieve it cool. so what um a, and what how, a turnaround and, i mean you, you you that's a real like i mean bl- like blatant turnaround in your life it's it's really pretty amazing and and thanks to you just ma- basically flicking a switch and making the decision to do something about it which is yeah i think is not always easy but you mean well done that's it's that's amazing mm. you know it gives people hope to say oh you can you can just make the decision to make changes in your life and and you proof of that you know mm. but but but, but, if, but sorry kelly like i mean i i often think that like people sometimes forget like that it it wasn't necessarily that easy you know like like mm. there was steps between it that were which was still tough you know what i mean it's not mm. maybe like that just happened there was there was tougher times between that yeah. is is that the case do you th- do you remember or was it oh, literally, yeah. yeah i mean that that transition all of those transitions were were very hard um and i think the key thing in that area is to always make sure that you're surrounded by the right people because I, I think wherever humans focus their energy on, that will expand. If you're waking up to negativity, if you're waking up to um, people that are going to put you down, if you're going to wake up to people that don't believe in you, then it's challenging. I just happened to change my environment. Mm. You know, that was a big one for me. Like I changed my environment and suddenly I was surrounded by people that, that but doing other things, mm. you know, achieving goals and taking hold of their health and fitness. So, of course, I'm going to go in that direction. So, you know, and that's why I encourage, you know, if you are stuck in a, in a situation where you can't get out, then you need to go and surround yourself with people that, you know, are going to help you um, because you are, I do believe that you are the sum of the five people that you hang around with. So, you know, you've really got to take, control of of who those people are to step the game up and that Mm. could be joining groups it could be joining a weight loss program it could be um you know going to an uh you know mind events or you know weekends that are going to lift your spirit up so that you can believe in yourself um mine was that i got out of london um i was surrounded by um you know health and fitness um uh you know I, it was not, I, I would never say that I ever lost friends. I just had to change my friends, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I will always be friends with every single person that I meet in my life though. Everyone's my friend, but it was just, like, okay, well, I've got to get from there to there. But so I need to go and hang around with that person who's going to help me kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and be mindful that, you know, everything that comes out of your mouth will happen. You know, if you're constantly sitting there saying, I can't, I can't, you know, and it's something, you know, my, my auntie, my auntie's an example, you know, she lives in London and she, she'll love this if she ever heard it. But, you know, if I ever rung her and I say, oh, okay, I want to do this. And she'd be like, great, let's go and do it. Even if it was the most impossible thing in the world, she'd be like, don't worry, let's just go and figure it out, <laughs> you know? So, you know, if you're in that environment where people have got that self-belief in you, then, you know, it, it's it's just going to, you, your life is going to skyrocket. Mm. Kelly, yeah. um, can, can you just take us through the evolution and the the kind of feelings that one starts to feel with a panic attack? Uh, what, what did you experience and sort of, yeah, how do you identify that something is a panic attack? Um, 
Well, mine was very visual based. Um, mine was very an emotional feeling. So when I first started having them, I used to just feel as though something was going really wrong within my body. You know, your breathing would be shallow. Um, my vision would go and I just had to get out of a place. I needed to be somewhere safe. Um, and that safe haven was generally my bedroom. Um, they would be um, quite visual for me. Like I would feel as though like everything would be caving in and I would my heart would stop. Yeah, so – um, and I never, I used to just, and like you go mental, you've got no control over your thoughts, your, um, it would be like a constant, something bad's going to happen to me, something bad's going to happen to me, okay, you can't go outside, because if you go outside, you're, you're going to pass out, you're going to die, um, you wow. know, and for me, and, and it was, it was actually a real, um, I was working for the top hedge fund in London as a trader's assistant, and I'd walk down on Oxford Street. And I was having a panic attack, like everything started caving in. And this girl, the girl who I walked out with who worked at, um, worked at the place, she said, are you okay? I said, no, I'm not. I'm just, I'm having a really bad panic attack right now. And she Goodness. said, I've got the Bible. She said, I've got the Bible for you. <laughs> and the next, um, the next day she, well, not the actual Bible, but the next day she came and placed a book on my desk and it was oh. written by a New Zealand lady. Um, can't remember it, Claire Weeks, I think. And she um, and I started to read about it, and I burst out in tears at my desk because, for the first time in a book, I read what was physically happening to my body. Because, wow. because I used to get quite visual. I, they then told me that it was the adrenaline going past my eyes that was shutting, shutting that down, yes. like that feeling of like, you know, right. of you know, yeah. like that. So I then. Um, that same lady used to have some CDs. So for me to get to work every day, I used to put these CDs on and just hop in the tube and then get to work. Cause my safe place was work and my safe place was home Yeah. and anything else in between used to make my heart race. Wow. Wow. Um, I'd got to a point where I started to get major pains in my heart and I ended up getting about 5,000 pounds worth of like heart treatment and in the end they just said it was the stress that I was causing upon my body huh. yeah goodness yeah and then the belief with this whole thing was that the more I pushed through it the more it would become easier so mm. the more I retracted myself to know that 20 minutes later I'd be fine so that's what I started practicing I would actually practice going through it I would practice breathing I would actually practice, okay, if you're feeling this way, don't go run away and make it worse and mm. worse. You know, push through it slowly, breathe through it. And the more I did that, the the, the less they got. And then the more that I focused on actually, because if I actually felt as if I ran, I'd convince myself if I went and did cardio, I'd actually have a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, so I'd create, you know, I'd created all these stupid, you know, fearful thoughts which were controlling um, but Jeez. it was a, it, sometimes it was like a, I'm gonna. I literally always thought that I would stop breathing and I would die. Wow. Um, yeah. And at night, I used to just listen to my heart and just hope that I could breathe again. Jeez. Yeah. Like it was a real weird. Yeah. So it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's. I after I had my second baby, I had one panic attack. Um, I was really stressed out, and I just. I remember saying to Paula, I, you know, I can't, we've got to go home and I burst out crying and then I was like, what has brought this on? And then I then I had to look at the stresses in my life and took it back. So I probably would have only really had about one in 11 years now. Wow, wow yeah. that's amazing. And, and, and when you were really suffering, did you, how was your mental state? Did you go into like any sort of depression or anything like that? Uh, I never, it was... Um, no, so, yeah, I, I definitely, the elements of depression were there in my early 20s. Like, yeah. even as a teenager, I, I, I went into really bad places in my head, um, you know, and I found a diary the other day um, where I used to write in, and they were they were very, very hard thoughts. Like, I cried as I was wow. reading it because wow. I just think, how did Jeez. my head ever go to a place that didn't want to be on this earth? Wow. You know, Jeez. I didn't. I never ever valued me as a person or valued anything that was going on in my head. Um, so yeah. I 
I don't, I haven't really ever felt like that, but I've also been under the care of an amazing um, integrative doctor here in the, in, um, in the Gold Coast. So, um, you know, I take things like NeuroLift, which have got a supplement called SAM in it that work down the lines of the MTFHR gene. Because um, what happens is, is people that have pyral disorder or the MTFHR gene, if our levels are out, it sends chromium levels high, which means we don't have control yeah. of, mm. like, say, like as a child, as a tantrum or, you know, anger. Um, so if you can keep those balances up, and this is something that I've learned over the last year that maybe a lot of what I went through mm. could have been helped naturally. Wow. Um, mm. Yeah, so... But then another thing is to keep your stress levels down, to exercise, <laughs> to you know, to focus on cell renewal. Um, but yeah, those emotions are you know the 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 deep um, and how they felt. So I really understand what it's like to suffer from all those aspects of anxiety, you know, agoraphobia. Um, that's you know that's why I just think it's great that my daughter is being told to hold her heart and learn to mm, breathe. Yeah. Why wasn't I told that by a doctor at twenty? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For sure. Why, it would have helped you. you know, a lot. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, and that that was the cure was breathing. Yeah. You know, getting oxygen into the brain and slow down your breath. Why didn't a, Why didn't a doctor when I was twenty two, twenty one tell me to breathe? Totally. You know, like instead it was like, hold on, let's give you an antidepressant. Let's make you line up in a mental hospital to make you feel like that there's something wrong with you again. Yeah. Let's make you wait wait six months to so we can put you on a course where the where the nurse has a panic attack in mm. front of you. It's wow, like so. I felt like it was the most degrading process in the world and I'm like, stuff that. I know why I'm here on this earth. I'm here yeah. for amazing things and the <laughs> only person who can help me is me. Yeah, wow. Yeah, awesome. And that was like, that's me. You know, get back to your heart. I always knew in my heart there were big things happening, but that part of my life was helped me be, hunt. you know, this is why I'm here. Yeah. You know, you know the, the roller coasters of life, if something bad happens to me now, I sit back and I thank it. Mm. I thank <laughs> it. Because... You can only be thankful for those terrible moments because what's around the corner is incredible. Yeah. You know, mm. it really is. And I still go through them. I have my ups and downs, but I never ever sit there and think, oh, poor me. I think, wow, okay, what can I, what is it within that that I could be grateful for? What did I learn from that? Yeah. And I could probably have a day spin around. And if I'm still grieving, then I have to look at the belief systems and values that I put around that situation. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. because that, that that really is the only reason why bad things will carry on is because we've put a belief system or a value around, you know, those triggers or, or those emotions. Wow. So, so Kelly, do you reckon if someone's in that scenario where they think, well, that sounds like me, I, I think I might be having panic attacks because often people aren't sure, you know, what it is, like you were saying as well. What is the first step? Like, do you... Do you go on medication for a while until you can get your head right, or do you um, do you try and figure it out yourself? Or what is your recommendation if you're feeling like that? Because I think lots of people do. My recommendation would be to find an amazing integrative doctor, someone <laughs> who's me who, someone who's medically trained and who gives a holistic approach. Mm. Okay. Someone who looks at the cause, not the, you know, someone who, you know, and I know that's very hard to say because there's probably not a lot going around. Mm. Um, mm. You know, here on the Gold Coast, we're, we're riddled with them, you know, yeah. um, and maybe finding someone that you can talk to who has a natural approach to anxiety, depression, and maybe even someone in the health and fitness industry that has the right qualifications um, because, you know, as I say, it really does depend directly where you get that help from. Um, there yeah. are a lot of amazing books out there, you know, audios from a natural side. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was Claire Weeks that um, the the book that I that that I had. But you know, if you're starting to feel that way, stop, feel your engine, <laughs> and <laughs> breathe. <laughs> there you go. I love it. Keep it simple. And and. and 
cut out all your stimulants, cut out all your coffee, cut out all the alcohol, uh, get yourself back to exercise, take yourself to the beach, go for a walk and breathe. You know, mm. start to do something. You know, if it was instant, look at cutting out all your stimulants, you know, all your crap food, take yourself mm. down to the, to the beach for a walk, you know, get the headspace app, start to breathe and start to take from within because we are only creating that anxiety from from ourselves and worry. Yeah. The more worry, I'm worrying. Something's happening to me. Something's happening to me. And then you're breathing up here, you know, like, and it's like, okay, no, there's nothing wrong with me. Take a big, deep breath in and out. Let's go and do something that makes me happy. Yeah. What yeah. makes you happy? Take yourself to the beach. Take yourself for a massage. Ground yourself. Yeah. Find something. Go and lie on the grass. Mm, mm. <laughs> Take yourself back to nature. Go to a waterfall. You know, like nature has, and that's why I probably love being in the Gold Coast. You know, if I mm. feel that way, I take myself to the beach and I dig my feet in the sand and uh -huh. I just breathe. Yeah. You know, mm. so simple strategies like that and taking yourself away from fear is, um, yeah, the fear, fear of fear of fearing. It's it's a very hard thing to control. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Mm. I, th I, I think that's such like quality advice and. You know, just just keep things simple is, is you know, and, and and look for things that that you can just do like that are sort of easily accessible, you know, instead of I don't know, looking to go and like get whatever pills or like smash totally. the gym or, or whatever it is, you know, it really is like the simple things that generally sort of pull us out of these things. Mm. Um, Kelly, so I just wanted to, to, to ask a couple of things. Actually, you mentioned like surrounding yourself by sort of five people. Um, so uh, the first part, I guess, is like, who are your five people? But then also um, when you talked about your, your bodybuilding and you went onto stage and you're in, in a bikini, like, what, what did that feel like for you, you know, like, because you'd come from a very difficult place and then in quite a short space of time, you'd, you'd got to this, like, you know, in great physical condition um, and you were then on stage. But, you know, I can imagine your mind was still like maybe a little bit, I don't know, like shy or, or self, uh, you know, self, you, you maybe had not as much confidence as you do now. Um, what was that feeling like on there? Oh, it was, um, I can't really describe it. I, you know, I knew that I'd put all the work in. You know, I was trained, I, you know, for, for that time I had contacted John, who was my one of my best friends and trainers at the time. Um, I never lacked confidence as mm. such. I may have had bad body image about myself, but I never lacked confidence. So, you know, um for me, it was like, if I can do this, I can do anything, Cool, you know, um, and it was a real like, oh, my God, um, standing up on stage was just at the start of the journey, like, okay, hold on, or it was a real weird one, it was like, oh, I was always, this was always meant to happen, <laughs> you know, like, if, everything that I do, it's like, oh, that was always going to happen, you know, like, because I'm quite a visionary, yeah. um, and when you vision something happen, it does happen, mm -hmm. Um so, you know, it was like, okay, well, I visioned that, you know, shake his hand, got my trophy, what's next, <laughs> you know? Um, and, you know, sure, there's ups and downs. Like that following year, um, I started to compete again. Um, so that year, the first year competing, um, I was quite good at, like, you know, ideas and marketing. And I, I think I was, like, one of the first UK fitness models that were ever paid because I mm. asked to be paid. Wow. I was like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> why do I why do I just want supplements you know pay me for a shoot yeah um yeah. yeah so you know I moved on um I started doing more photo shoots I was in um the my my protein uh fitness model first um and then I had this vision I I, I um had joined bodybuilding.com like my space and I was like, every day I used to go on there and add my photos. I was like, oh, wow, wouldn't it be amazing to be, you know, with bodybuilding.com, you yeah. know, like America's mm. largest fitness giant. And then one day I look on my inbox and it was like, I've got a message from them. And then it was like them asking me to wow. be their UK model. 
And I just remember just thinking, wow, I, I kept thinking that. I kept like wishing that I could. And then that was, you know, my step into bodybuilding.com. Um, so I suppose that was like a, I'd always – I'd always asked, I do believe in asking, you know, like asking the universe, asking people, still doing action. Like I'm not on like one of these people that just sit there and cross my legs and manifest. You still got to put the work in. Mm. Um, mm. But it's having that self-belief first, that vision, and then maybe seeing opportunities. So, you know, yes, I'd put myself on bodybuilding.com. I'd keep my photos on there. So that got me seen, mm. you know. Yeah. It wasn't like, okay, I'm going to sit there and wish it. Totally. I still had to put that work yeah, in. Totally, yeah, totally, you know? um, And then that year, um, I um, kept putting myself out there. I was like, okay, well, if I need to be in a magazine, do I not go and hire the guy that takes the photos for the magazine? Like, because <laughs> oh, But that's my logic, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, if I, Clever. You know, Your I, roadmap there. Yeah. Yeah, I found the photographer and, and that was my iconic shoot, like literally. Um, and then they remembered me, you know, and obviously I built my way up. I'd always self-promote. I, You know, my background was IT. I'm an IT nerd. I love computers. <laughs> um, so that side of it was like my calling. I was like, yeah, I can go on the internet and do that. Oh, I wonder if I can write them an article. I don't write articles. I'll get someone to help me write the articles. You know, like I was always like... <laughs> thinking um and then the next year um I trained for the finals again but I um started to get a lump in my throat um Mm. and within three or four weeks I was in the hospital because I was like hitting the back of my throat and the NHS yeah the NHS system were like sorry we're not going to do anything about it till you stop breathing what um what yeah so I ended up finding out it was a throgliacal cyst. So I was in the I knew I knew I was in the middle of training, and then Jeez. I ended up having to put it on a credit card and go private. And oh. I had um, a lump uh, on my thyroid the size of a golf ball. Whoa! Um, wow. So I went and uh, and they took it out, and then um, I always looked for the cause, you know. So yeah. I contacted. Mm. Phil Richards in the UK, he's an amazing trainer and researcher. And I said, look, I've had this stragrassal cyst. Um, and he said to me, have you ever had any root canal treatment? <laughs> and I said, <laughs> yeah. I said, in fact, I had one two months ago. And he said, go and get Goodness. that tooth pulled out. He said, go and get that tooth pulled out. Because a root canal, there's that theory that root canals aren't, you know, like don't stop the infection. Um, because I was like, what, how did this happen? You know, like I don't have an issue yeah. with my thyroid. So I literally went into a dentist. I said, pull my tooth out. And when <laughs> they pulled my tooth, when they pulled that tooth out was a sack of infection. No and way. They, yeah. So what they think it was doing was running down there. Now, even though I got that cut out, if I hadn't have got that tooth pulled out, wow. that would have infected my whole body for who knows how long. Jeez. Um, so that was a roadblock in my training and I was told to not train for 10 weeks afterwards, but of course, Kelly Rennie doesn't listen and and started training at like six weeks with this big scar. And I mean, I was in, I was, I was in like major surgery. I I shouldn't have trained. And then I, I made it, I made it to the UK finals again, but my body was very stressed out and, um, I, I placed in the semifinals, but not in the finals because my body was just like, Hey, you're like you shouldn't really be training at all um (laughs) yeah um and then um i got pregnant with uh, i i literally cried the next day after the finals something came over me that i needed to be pregnant paul and i'd been together four years and i said you know can we have a baby um and i thought i'm not gonna fall pregnant because i've been training for a year and a half mad and a week later, I was pregnant. <laughs> Two weeks later. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, my body, even if people look at me, I fall pregnant. So, yeah, I have to be very careful. <laughs> um, yeah, but going back to surrounding yourself with the right people, I mean, you know, back then it was trainers, you know, the right people, hmm. educating myself, you know, skip past kids, um, you know, I've, either have business coaches um 
you know, when I became a single mum, you know, it was friends. Um, I didn't have a business coach for a while. I've just hired another business coach now just to keep me accountable. But, I, you know, this current moment I have incredible entrepreneurial girlfriends, friends. Mm. Uh, we all have the same belief systems. Um, you'll never find us talking about how crap life is. You know, we talk about how amazing mm. life is. Um, and that continues. But if you're always, you know, I write down in my journal every day that I, I create my soulmate friends, you know, I, wow. and everywhere I go and that just happens, you know, I was at a course in the weekend um, and I just, you know, I knew that I was meant to be on that course to meet more friends and I did and I feel like I've like leveled up again. It's like my wow. life is leveling yeah. up, leveling, leveling up. Um so you do got to, you have to put yourself out there. Like I'm always learning, yeah, you know, of you know, That's I went big, to, yeah. went to America a couple of months ago and went to the Click Funnels conference over there. I met more people. I, you know, I've kept in touch with them. I now got a new business coach. So it's someone who can believe in what your beliefs, you know, what you have and can help you get there faster, Yeah, yeah. you know. Wow. And that's why mom, that's why mums come to me is because I generally a hundred percent believe that every mum can achieve their goal, mm. and I can help them get there. So oh, sure. if, if you know if if they can give their power, you know if they can give their energy to me for eight weeks, then I'll change their life. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I, I'd love to hear more about your journey of becoming a mum, and like you, you mentioned that you know it happened really kind of quickly and yeah what was going on in your mind did you keep training uh how did you sort of go about the next year or two you know through that process of having young kids and still building mm -hmm. a business and still training and obviously this was laying the foundation for for where you are now i would imagine uh, at least in part um but how did you sort of put that all together and and make it work in your life Oh God knows. Um, I I I knew I knew I always wanted kids, but I didn't realize how hard it would be. Um, Paul and I just opened a couple of gyms. Financially, we weren't in the right headspace to have a child, but I fell pregnant. Um, I did my first pregnancy with Vaya. I did a paleo pregnancy, so I promoted that during my pregnancy. Um, I still trained, still did small hit training. I also became a qualified pre and postnatal trainer. So during my pregnancy, uh, that's when um, Katie Bulmer Cook and I, who was she was the top personal trainer in the UK, we wrote the Fit Mummy Manual, um, which was a pre uh, postnatal book. Um, and I, I was very fortunate to have um, my my pregnancy was fine. I wasn't too bad with Vaya, but I had a beautiful natural birth uh, in the living room <laughs> in Sheffield. Um, I did hypnobirthing, so I learned that wow. that to breathe the baby out. Um, I um, I don't even didn't even make a sound. I thought that it was like illegal Goodness. to make a sound, even though I wanted to. <laughs> wow. I, and I did. I didn't actually know that Bayer was back to back as well. Um, so that would mean that, you know, I was in more pain, but we didn't use the word Jeez. pain. Um, and she was also in her cowl, which means my waters didn't burst. So when she was coming out, she had a film over wow. top of her body. Yeah. Just like, I think it's one in 20,000 or one in 100,000, something Jeez. very special. Yeah, wow. so I, I, I had a beautiful birth. You know, she came out. She didn't cry. It was, you know, it was, it was beautiful. But from then day, from that day onwards, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> like I had no idea. Um, I every time I went to put her in her bassinet, she'd cry. So I put her on my chest, and she'd stop. So Paul <laughs> and I, Paul and I, for the first eight weeks, slept with Bayer on our chest because it <laughs> wow. was just. Okay, well, just she stopped crying. Let's just go to sleep. I'm not going to put her to sleep. She's crying. Yeah. Um, you know, and from a business side, you know, we were still running gyms. It was crazy. And unfortunately, um, it didn't go too well. Uh, Paul found someone else very early in the, those days. Um, and I uh, found out about that. And I, uh, Packed up my bags and had to leave the UK as a single mum when wow. I was, wow. yeah, when I was five, when she was five months old. So it was the, 
toughest time of my life. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I became, I had to move to New Zealand. So I had nothing, Jeez. you know, all my money was uh, in the gyms and I, I left with a baby and a bag on my back. Wow, so goodness. I moved, yeah, I moved into Nelson and, and, and with my mum. Uh, I started to, I did hire a coach straight away. Um, I, at oh. the time I started to coach fitness models. Um, and then Paul and I actually got back together. Um, and within that first week I was pregnant with Eden. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> he just looked at you again. <laughs> <laughs> he just looked at me and just that look. Um, <laughs> So having two kids in two years was really hard and especially going through what I went through. And that's kind of where, you know, the business started to fall into play. I had hired a coach. I was worked throughout my pregnancy with Eden. Um, and then when Eden was, I had another beautiful natural birth in Nelson, um, you know, in a pool. I was very lucky to have two incredible births. Not too many people get to do what I did. Um you know, I feel like I need like some kind of award or medal or something. <laughs> like, I'm just waiting for my medal. Um, <laughs> Visualize and, it. Oh uh, uh, yeah, it's coming. It's, it's got me, I've got this thing about Oprah handing me something. So there we I, go. Awesome. There go. <laughs> Oprah's going to be handing me some kind of award. Are you there, Oprah? Listening? <laughs> yeah. I hope so. <laughs> um, and then. Um, I hired a business coach when Eden was six weeks old because financially we needed to do it. Uh, it was probably too much pressure on myself and I kind of regret it and not because I uh, Eden ended up being a very anxious child. That was probably because of me. Um, but And I remember just saying to my business coach, like, I can't do this. I said, I'm a, I swore and I said, I'm a busy mum. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And I, I literally went <laughs> on the computer Five minutes later, and I bought businessfitness.com, wow. and nice. the, entre the entre entrepreneurial mind of me literally got the logos changed, and I start started selling my programs out a week after that. Amazing. Wow. Yeah, oh. yeah because amazing. it was me. I could teach yeah. a mum a six I could teach a mum a six minute workout. I could talk about emotional eating. I was relatable. It was me. It was mm. my passion. Mm. And I couldn't, didn't want to teach fitness models. Yeah. I wasn't a fitness model. I was a bloody busy mum, you yeah. know. Um, and I kept the business at where it was at. And, you know, I was coached by, you know, some really good business people for a year. And, you know, all my ups and downs were just normal and it was okay to have that vision. And then, yeah, from year to year since then, so that's, you know, four years, four years now, not five, feels like five, <laughs> um, we've literally grown the business. And then uh, when, unfortunately, uh, when Ve uh, Eden was two and Vaya was three, Paul and I split up Um and that created an abundance of joy for me because I found happiness with my life again. Yeah. Um, wow. And uh, it was hard. Paul went back to the UK for nine months. So I was a single mum with a two and a three-year-old trying to run a business. But it kind of helped ingrain many of the tools that I use now. Um, and... Yeah, that's been two years now of um, doing what I'm doing and growing the business. And, you know, from a relationship point of view, you know, Paul and I are amazing now as, uh, you know, parents working together and, you know, being amicable. And, you know, that, that side of it is really important to me because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I – I had that whole vision of like this beautiful white house with a picket fence yeah. and you know, you're all yeah. this you're all this happy family and you're all holding yeah. hands yeah. and you've got, yeah. got the nice ring and you've got the nice like family car and that just didn't happen. <laughs> you know, and it's not no. to, not to say that it won't happen, but you know, I've been dealt a lot of crap, but at the same time yeah. I just think yeah. I haven't because I am literally living my best life possible. Yeah. Like so I am. Nice. You know, and it's all a choice. Mm. It's all a mm. choice. Totally. It's my choice. Totally. It, it's it's. You've always got to take the higher road, but that's a choice to make sure that you're happy. Mm. You know, like and and we forget that how if we, if we're sitting there, ref, you know, judging someone or a situation, it's only something that says about ourselves. 
you know so we really have to take responsibility for every aspect of our life and say hey i'm responsible now yeah. you know mm. i don't say oh poor me i'm a single mom and you know i'm tired i just think okay i'm really tired today i'm going to hop into bed i'm mm. going to listen to an audio book that's going to make me happy yeah, yeah. um so sorry, I've kind of gone like tangent, tangent. No, no it's good. That, that's what it's you like. You just like elevated on the stage now, and we're like, yeah, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, like let's let's maybe talk a, a bit more about you know say the the business side of things. Like, h- how have things grown for you? Like from those early days, you know, I guess you said you you started selling your online programs, um, and then. I mean, you know, obviously it's just sort of catapulted from there. So, so how did it move? And you also had, you said, you said you got business coaches and stuff. So yeah. What was that journey? I mean, the first year and a half, I did it all by myself. So I basically sold them over the phone. So some, and I, I had a coach to help me. So for me, it was about building those integral systems, making that, you know, what I do works. And, um, I did that myself and then I hired other people. So I found a coach um, probably two years ago. We were selling maybe like 15 to 20 people onto a program every two weeks. Mm. Um, And that's what I thought I could do, you know. And then in between I was sort of hiring business coaches. And, you know, it was quite hard at some times because, like, I ended up hiring a coach for like six months, gave him like 11 grand and everything we put into place didn't work. So I got my money back. Wow. And that was when wow. I became a single mum. So then I got quite hesitant to, to do anything. And then I actually just thought, right, the business is making good money. I need to stay on top of my mental health. So for a good 10 months, I didn't do anything mm. um, because I just needed to be stable with my brain and my kids. Um, mm. And then I got, you know, put my vision back on and I was like, oh, wow, you know, what do I want to do? And I'd been following, a, you know, a girl called Betty Rocker for a while um, and I'd put that, that vision out there that I needed something to happen. And my brother um, one day um, said to me, oh, you know, I've got, an, a, I've got a ticket to a guy called James Shramko's event. And um, I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll go to it. And then I walked into the event, this girl, Betty Rock, is in front of me. <laughs> and I just uh-huh. said, I, I knew, and she was from America. This is in Sydney. I said, well, I, I, I always knew I was going to meet you. <laughs> wow. And she invited me out to her house um, wow. in the U.S. And I was in the U.S. happened to be two weeks later. Um, <laughs> and at that event. At that event, I learned some more strategies. Um, Betty and I um, masterminded together. um, And then I started a new vision of the business. So last year, I put things into play. I surrounded myself with not coaches, but just more people that would guide me. And I felt like I had more of a structure to Busy Mum Fitness. So, And then I had just some visions about media. Um, we kind of went from about 20 to 25 and then got back in New Zealand last year. I spoke at New Zealand fitness events and we just happened to be, um, you know, on New Zealand news. They did a big story about us. Um, just got lots more media for changing more people's lives. And then we went from selling, you know, 20 to 40 people, you know, and now every two weeks and, you know, now we're selling 50 to 60 a week now. So, um, I've grown the team, you know, uh, we've now, um, you know, went from two salespeople to six salespeople. Um, I've just hired a new business coach as well because I've got a vision. I went to the ClickFunnels conference. Um, You know, there were fitness girls out there earning 10 million a year, changing, you know, tens of thousands of lives. And I'm like, well, I can do that. Why couldn't I do that? You know, like, I've got the structure, I've got the business, I've got the sure. mind. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that that's the aim now, you know, and I've done that in a in a matter of six months. So, um, but I need the structure and the business and, and the team. So, you know, this last few months have been about building the team, the systems, the vision, um, and just staying accountable because I'm ready for it now. You know, I, I've, I've got a balance in my life where I can do it. And, um, you know, we, 
we literally do change the lives of, you know, so many mums and now we just want to take that to the rest of the world because our business has been 95% New Zealand based. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, but we're about to launch our new uh, funnel in a couple of weeks. So we'll actually be coming back to the UK. Cool. Um, yeah, oh. so just more, more targeting, you know, UK-based um, people. Now that we've got much more of a trust built, you know, we've had years of years of that. Um, so, yeah, time to take over the world busy mum style. <laughs> that's so cool. Well, yeah. you certainly sound ready, that, that's for sure, and it's uh, really yeah. exciting. I'm quite fascinated yeah. by the um, business coaching aspect. Um, I find it quite fascinating that in your t- like this was a really tough time in your life. You mm-hmm. had very little cash and and you had this you know two little kids, but you decided mm-hmm. I need to hire a coach. And like mm-hmm. I, I feel like that might not have been my first thought at that in that sort of scenario. What made you decide a coach would be a good idea? And, and how did you sort of get, let's say, how did coaching become like such a big part of your life? Is it because you had coaches uh, as a kid or you met someone that had a coach? Or why did you I, think coach? Because I needed a guarantee approach to get to A to B faster. And these people were guaranteeing me the road to success. And I'm one of these people that like things done yesterday, so I really want to find out how to do it. So if a coach comes to me and say, "Well, I know that I can help you. Let's do this, this, and this," then I then I then I'll do it. Um, and for I, the guy that I did hire and get my money back from, um, you know, it, it was in his claws. What he did didn't work. Um, so that's when I actually sat back. So what I do now is, you know, the, the kind of coaching that I have now is more accountability because it's not really that I can't do it all. And I do listen to my intuition, but you get so busy. Sometimes I could be sitting there on emails all day and it might just be a coach saying, Hey, you know, focus on this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So basically that's what, you know, that that's, you know, kind of what, you know, the, the vision that I have now with coaching is someone just keeping on my, keeping on me. Um, because I need that accountability or structure to say, you know, have you remembered this? Why are you doing this? You know, because, you know, now get to a point if you are, you know, going to excel that much, you need to make sure that you're keeping in check. Um, And, you know, that's the kind of help that I need at the moment is the inner work. You know, it's not that I don't have it. It's just making sure that I'm always doing that mind work, that inner work, and keeping accountable to what I what I say I'm doing what I say mm. I'm doing. Um, I feel like online I have the skills in every area, um, but I still think you know going to events like Click Funnels or the Conversions Conference or you know uh, where you can meet people who are up there that mm. makes you think oh I can be up there. How did you do that? Oh yeah. okay, oh, I forgot about that. You know and. It really is, you know, that element. You go there and you just learn so many things. So, I mean, I just, I'm a big believer in in that aspect, you know, because you're surrounded by people who have done it. And that just makes you think like I did when I competed. If they can do it, I can do it. So it's just, yeah, it's just that energetic, um, you know, uh, force that you get from from people like that. It's like, of course you can do it. Have you thought of this? No, I'll go and do that. Um, Yeah. Yeah really simple things like that cool. yeah that's cool and um you know you spoke about like media and uh, like you know getting sort of noticed and traction and stuff and and i think it was pretty recently like you got a very cool letter from someone uh you know very well known i'll let you i'll let you explain the story but like so so what's what, what sort of program would someone like that have gone through I mean, tell her what is, of course, and then like explain what what the program is that you you know you offer her, or or anyone yeah, so, that does it. Yeah, so Kate, um, this is quite a few years ago. This was actually oh, in right. England. Um, this was five years ago when Bay was born, and Katie Bolmer Cook and I had wrote the Fit Mummy Manual postnatal book, um, and Katie um, uh, thought, why don't we send it to Kate because she was just having George. Um, so Katie put it in the mail, um, the DVD and the book that we'd written, and we got a thank you letter back then. Um, so we had actually got press in the UK back then, um, but it obviously became more 
you know, it, it up in the media again because of her third child. So I got approached by the media <laughs> um, and they wanted me to sit because my latest book is um, Busy, um, Busy Mum Syndrome. So mm-hmm. that kind of went viral, like, it, and it went majorly viral. But then suddenly I was, because Katie's trainer, um, but <laughs> Um, we were the only ones that actually got a thank you letter back from the palace. So wow. you know, I think that was more that obviously she had recognized it, thanked us. And to have that official letter back from her was, you know, amazing. Wow. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, you know, the, the system that we sent her was our postnatal book. So that really covers from birth up to the postnatal period. So looking after you know, my the way that I deal with a postnatal mum is healing from the inside out. You know, social media these days makes us think that we should be squatting at 39 weeks or doing burpees at four weeks. That's not how I train a mum, mm. all right? For me, it's about healing. It's about um, doing pelvic floor work. It's about, you know, making sure that I always say for mum in that period, it's about wellness. It's about mindset, hydration, getting, mm. those, cortisol, getting those cortisol levels down you know, Mm. getting those abs back together. Mm. Um, And that's what our postnatal book was about, about, you know, the basics. And and these days, you know, you'll see a lot of the stars, you know, a lot of the fitness people are going back, oh, you know, I've started back at four weeks, but they have abdominal separation. You can see it Mm. in their tummies. Mm. It's too much pressure. So um, that's something that I'm very passionate about, Um, you know, the postnatal period and training properly. So, that got through the media, and then here in Australia and New Zealand, uh, we were on. The, I was on the morning show here in Australia talking about that and busy mum syndrome. Um, and once again, I'd even written it down a month before that we were going to be in Australian media. So cry, cry and always stay on top of that vision. And and it wasn't really oh it happened to me. I just happened to end up talking to someone who knew someone, but yeah. it was just obviously being aware of that. Um, mm. So, you know, that, that's that been quite pivotal. And even um, Live Strong just published yeah. me this thing. Wow. Uh, with, yeah, so that was really cool. So they've just wow. published me wow. on their website today about that story and, and my, the way that I would train a mum on a postnatal period. So, you know, and the thing is I, I'm, I'm just so – I love what I do. I love my passion. I, I'm a 100% believer in everything that I train a mum on and, and that's just so cool now that I'm being recognized for that across the world. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Really manifested really man- such amazing stuff. And it's yeah. a testament to your hard work. Like you said, I love the fact that you mentioned that it's it's not just sitting on your bum. It's like you can set the intention of what you want, but then make the plan to go and do it yeah. and spend the time doing that. And uh, wow. I mean, it's just a, a great story that you've got actually. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yes, you can manifest it but I still believe that there is action so what happens is is you write it down and that just might have to think oh okay well well, maybe I'll just ring that person and ask that person so Mm. you know it 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 is you know there is instant manifestation but there's also awareness and mindfulness of a situation to make you think outside the box like I could just be walking down the road and think oh why didn't I do that that's how I can get there faster Mm. you know um so it's uh yeah, it's 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 a, a just a, a logical way of taking action, really. Yeah, <laughs> sure. And, and and Kelly, just just to talk about the the sort of training element of it a, a little bit. Um, we recently, well, not recently, like early days, we spoke to a girl on the podcast, uh, Jessie Mandel, and she um, she was talking about like you know weight training was still important when you were um, you know when you were pregnant. Um, and then she also mentioned like post-pregnancy, the pelvic floor, like that for her was like a huge thing, which you obviously just touched on now. So what, and then um, I was reading like on, you know, one of the articles about you and, and you know, you, the, what you think about the whole training and like you, you put down um, training uh, like t- for, I think this is postnatal um, is actually like almost number four in the queue. Like there's so many things before that, which I think is like super important as well. So like what is the advice you give moms you know say just before they're having uh the baby and then you know like a month sort of after uh, is sure. it quite general or is it more specific um, look 
look, in the first trimester, you can train how you were training before. Um, a lot of people don't know that they're pregnant. Uh, you haven't got the hormone relaxing in the body. So, you know, it's not going to affect the joints. You obviously always have to check with the doctor first. You know, that's the main thing to make sure that there's no conditions that are an issue. When we go into the second trimester, we I look at taking out any major plyo, anything that's going to put pressure on the pelvic floor muscles, you know, because if you've got a baby growing in there, you want to protect it. You don't want to be peeing your pants at 60. Mm -hmm. So still weight train, we still squat, we still use uh, deadlifts, anything posterior to keep, you know, the hamstrings strong, the back strong, mm. you know. Um, so I just take out any, you know, anything that's going to be, you know, a lot of jumping movements, mm. no rotation work to mm. affect, uh, you know, pulling the abdominals apart. Mm. Um, last trimester, once again, um, a lot of mums get quite dizzy when doing overhead. I don't put a mum on their back because that's not good for, you know, any veins or, you know, anything that's going to cut off blood circulation. So things like squats, walking lunges, any band work that's going to pull the back up because, you know, when you're breastfeeding, you're like this. Um, and I just use really small circuits, step-ups, um, walking, anything that's – in the last trimester, it's about making a mum feel comfortable. It's about. It's not about – you know, like there was a girl over here, don't know what her name was, you know, doing jump jump squats and burpees at 39 weeks. And yeah. I'm sorry, mm. that, that's just stupid. Yeah. You're stupid. <laughs> you are. Yeah. And, you, and yeah, awesome. Yeah. Cool. You're awesome. Well done. You know, I'm <laughs> like, whatever, you know, and that's how she got attention. But I'm not, I'm not for that. Mm. Um, so. We can start to be aware of the TVA, um, you know, the, uh, in between the pubis bone and the belly button during pregnancy. Um, I use small activation because that muscle people tend to forget. Um, so straight after birth, um, I look at healing from the inside out. So um, number one, it's about the mum, you know, getting sleep, getting mm. water, getting healthy food because that's what's going to repair the system faster and we have really high cortisol levels after birth and we need to get them down because if you're in a really stressed out state you're not going to lose weight yeah. potentially it can yeah. inhibit the weight loss so create the foundations the basic first the mindset the wellness the sleep healthy eating and before, in the early days, you can do, when you're breastfeeding, you can do pelvic floor, you can do TVA breathing, uh, you can do basic um, abdominal work. If there is separation, we can deal that from straight away. And then as soon as you've got the all go from six weeks, then we look at basic um, circuit training, which are all to do with healing from the inside out. Squats are really good because squats actually do activate the pelvic floor, mm. um, you know, just Still probably no plyo, but just any compound movements or band work or body weight stuff. But once again, I always keep training under 20 minutes and maybe like three mm. times a week. Then as long as there's no abdominal separation, pelvic floor's flying, there's no – I take only take C-section from 10 weeks because the C-section scar does take about 10 weeks to heal. Mm. Anyone training before that, I'm like, why heal? That, that yeah. scar's deep, Yeah, you know. Mm. So, you know, the way that I train a mum, hey, it might be different, but you'll get a flat tummy, you know, uh -huh. and that's what mum, <laughs> yeah. you'll, have a, you have, you'll have a nice flat tummy and your scar will be fine and you won't be complaining about aches and pains and you'll feel good, Yeah. all right, and that's very important. Yeah, for sure. Sounds pretty darn good. And, yeah. And, and what about like, I mean, you must have some like really cool, I guess, success stories just in terms of like, especially mindset, you know, and... and getting mom sort of back on track uh how you know how does that make you feel and um you know are there any sort of short stories you can share i mean I, we, we see tons of stuff on like your insta and whatnot just in terms of you know ladies getting back into shape and stuff and you know these are really like important uh times in people's lives and and you know like the, you do literally change their lives i guess you know with your programs oh i can name loads. I mean, like we've just had a lady come on to our support program and she's one step away from coming off her um, diabetes medication. Wow. You know, so we've, we, we've reversed her diabetes in 12 weeks, Jeez. you know, and this is a girl that never thought that she could do it. Um, 
one of my ladies who's working for me now, <laughs> um, who's amazing. She's gone from a size 22 to a size 12. Um, she, she is now my top coach, a salesperson. <laughs> um, she came working for me for four weeks ago. Great. And, um, you know, the one, uh, you know, one of our biggest ones, uh, Catherine, she had five children in six years, was on antidepressants. Oh, wow. um, she lost 20 something kgs with us. Um, and then we've just had three of our mums in New Zealand Women's Weekly. Uh, wow. That was a big for me because they, uh, they were in the Mother's Day edition. Their mum had cancer and died a year and a half ago. Uh, you okay. Uh, hello. There you go. Um. Can you? Uh, uh, no, no, you, no, you're good. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, we 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 kind of lost you, you at there? the at the uh, Women's Weekly. Oh right. Yeah. So um. Yeah, so they're in the Women's Weekly um, and then two of the other sisters came to me and then collectively they lost between 20 to 25 kgs each. Wow. Um, so they're in the Mother's Day edition doing Jeez. it for their mum. Um, wow, so and cool. one, one of them I actually went to school with. No way. Um, and oh, wow. They, yeah, two of them had been on my program and they'd be like, oh, we've got a sister but she hasn't been um, – she hasn't been happy since our mum died. And oh. then I, they came to my one of my talks in New Zealand and then I walked in and I was like, oh, my God, I know you guys. Oh, wow. and, oh, cool. Yeah, <laughs> so I know I remember her at school and now she's smaller. She's like a size 8 or a 10 and she's smaller than she was when we were at high school together. <laughs> so, wow. yeah. I mean, we do case studies every week now. So we, we present brand new transformations every week on, mm. our, on our website and we do case studies with our mums because we really want to embrace what they felt like before, mm. what was their favorite thing during and what advice do they give to mums because if we can get all of our mums giving advice to other mums and give them that belief, yeah. then that is going to empower more mums. So we're really focusing on our mums' stories um, so we probably uh, we probably do three new ones a week, um, and they just keep coming. So yeah, it's just it's just naturally coming to our business now. It's great. Wow, it's such an empowering message, eh? Hey? Yeah. And yeah. What is your what is your plan for the coming few weeks and months? I know you've got the big goal of ten thousand ladies in a year, and um, any books in the pipeline or anything else of that nature. Uh -huh. I'll be honest, I hate writing. Um, <laughs> I do it, but it's not where I'm at. Like, um, yeah, so what are, what are our visions? So obviously we've got the book now, Busy Mum Syndrome. I haven't mm. even properly promoted or advertised that. That will be the next goal. Um, our next goal is to launch our, our, new, um, our new program, which is our virtual gym, which is a low-end pro – well, not low-end, but a more affordable program. Mm. Um, mm. So that will be like uh, – 27 us a month um and that's where you get everything and me training you um but not as like because on our eight-week program we have one-to-one -one calls it's very much a, a private coaching program mm, yeah um but we wanted to hit all the people that I can't afford that um but if you are going to come to me and want results then i suggest the eight-week program because you're, I do truly believe that mums need that one-to-one -one coaching and that's the reason why we get amazing results is because we're ringing you. Um, yeah. And that, that's really a form, you know, if someone says to me, how do I get the best results? I say, well, come on our VIP program. Mm. So the low-end program is for all those people who would like to do it more self-led. Um, but lots of things. I have a big vision of, you know, busy mum being the hub of where everyone can come to for the right advice. So, you know, whether that's Busy Mum TV, whether that's, you know, our nutritionist, whether, you know, we have a naturopath on our team, um, you know, I really want it to be that one place where we've got all the right information, you know, yeah. all the right people providing that information um, and it be geared, you know, at Busy Mum. So that, that's, that's the big vision. Yeah, that's so cool. And do you also have like a like a Facebook group that all these sort of moms congregate in, and you, you they share stories there? Is that part of what? Yeah. So 
Uh, every two weeks, we have our eight-week programs, so they're the smaller programs, and then we have a larger um, group, which is our year-long support program, so we have hundreds on that, um, so that's my coaching program, so I coach that, but all my I have four, three trainers that work for me, and they take the other programs, so wow. yeah, it's really cool. All, all the people that work for me are my busy mums. Um, wow. My One of my trainers is my best that's friend. Cool. For, Went from best friend from when I was 19. Uh, my other trainer, she's from Christchurch. So, yeah, we're, the the best thing is that my mums all come work for me because they're passionate about wow. it. That's yeah. so cool. That's amazing. Those are like the best employees, aren't they? <laughs> oh, yeah, love them. You know, it's you can't sell a product or believe in a product if you haven't, you know, done it or, you yeah. know, aspect. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so that's so cool, Kelly. And I'm just like, um, obviously conscious of time and everything like that. And it's, you know, it's been such an, a fantastic chat. That's for sure. Really, really cool connecting with you. And just before we kind of wrap up, um, what is the best way for people to like get in touch with you on, on social media or any other way? And, and, and also, uh, if there is anything else that you kind of like... Um, you have coming up then you know if they, and they haven't mentioned it then yeah just let us know all of that stuff too please sure i mean facebook is where we do everything so kelly rennie busy mum uh we've got my instagram um and busy mum fitness instagram so kelly rennie fit um listen you know if if you're worried that you're not going to be able to do the eight weeks we've got a free program hmm. all right i give what you know because i don't want I need to give mum self-belief. So we have our 14-day free program, which is on our website. You know, by all means, go and try that um, mm. and get your belief systems up. Um, and then we have our eight-week program in our virtual gym now. So we literally have a program for every mum and every budget. Um, you know, reach out and ask me questions. I love questions. I also do um, Getting Real with Kelly Rennie every week on my Facebook now. So Unfortunately, I am a busy mum, so I try and stick to times, but it just doesn't happen. So, you know, always go and revisit, um, you know, and you can inbox me at any time as well from any of those, um, you know, any of those website or Facebook. So, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And do you ever get like guys emailing you for any reason or like, or like guys buying it for their wives or anything like that? <laughs> I, w I wish they did. I hope one day, one day I'm hoping Brad Pitt will message me. But, that <laughs> but so you've got a Put vision it this, you know what I yeah. mean? Jeez. <laughs> I'm putting it out to the world. <laughs> uh, uh, not really. Um, maybe back in the day when I was more of a fitness model. I mean, you do, but I just delete them. If they've, you know, sometimes guys ask for my signature. I'm like, why? Uh, 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 <laughs> awesome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Celebrity. Uh, yeah, I wish. Um, <laughs> no, no, not not a huge amount, which is fine. Generally, it's the mum. So that's probably a good thing anyway. That means my target audience is the target audience that I need, sure. you know. Um, yeah. 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 I'm so, not targeting those, those, those <laughs> handsome men. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's classic. Um, so, yeah, I just wanted to uh, say thank you uh, for obviously um, coming on the podcast. It's, uh, oh. it's, it's been so cool, like, talking to you and just, like, hearing your story, you know, like, you know, half of the stuff I guess I had no clue about. And it's just really inspiring, like, listening to this journey. It's so cool. And then, like, I mean, also one of the things that we didn't even touch on was, like, I guess you also being a, a twin. And I think you're about our our fifth twin on the podcast which is quite oh, wow. phenomenal you know so yeah. like um it's, it's really interesting and actually uh craig's fiance and my girlfriend are both twins as well and it's just like it's really yeah. it's <laughs> crazy yeah it's so crazy um but yeah no just uh it, like it, it's been so cool like and and so fascinating uh and especially inspiring you know just seeing and hearing this journey of yours you know and it, it's it's really great when you you hear people like yourself that are making change for the good in the world you know and you're helping people that are the most important people in the world and that's our moms you know like moms yeah. you know like 
every single person in the world has a mom or has had a mom you know what i mean and and you know you're helping them it's such an important part of their life and it's not i guess it's not just for the mom it's also for the kids so you're like impacting more than just the one person through helping the mom which is just so cool and that's just like i don't know spreading this awesome like energy and whatever you want to call it throughout you know throughout uh, humanity and um yeah. yeah and it's cool just also like being so open and honest about your story too you know what i mean there's like there's some things in there which people will really be able to relate to and and it was also great there was like so much wisdom i was just like sitting here going wow this is just like so cool you know like listening to to you all the advice you're giving even if it's not give you even if you weren't like uh doing it intentionally just through the way you were talking you were speaking from experience and and that was just great and uh you know I, I know that our listeners are going to get so much value in it i've got so much value out of it as well like i have tons of notes and i can't wait to listen to re-listen <laughs> awesome. to it to all the things we spoke about because i'm like i must remember that i must remember that i must remember that <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah and also of course you know um you are extremely busy and uh, we appreciate you giving up uh, two hours of your day for us so it's been uh, no it's been really cool so thanks so much no problem happy to help just, no it's great to chat to you guys just briefly from my side, like I really uh, want to echo what Gary said about empowerment and the fact that you have a hierarchy that's not um, sort of becoming thin as the as the apex of that hierarchy. It's more about like your mindset and um, you know getting to a wellness sort of from within, uh, which then leads to a healthier happier person ultimately and if that involves losing some weight because you you feel better within yourself then awesome you know and I think that is such a cool message and it relates back to what Gareth said about like the kids if you've got a a, a mum that's empowered and confident and feeling good about herself what an amazing effect that would have on a family as well so um, it really does um, have a longer term downstream effect the work that you're doing and the fact that you place the the person's mental and and you know wellness first is is really really different i think from a lot of other people out there and coaches out there and i think actually will make the ultimate biggest difference point of difference with you and and i think it's a really good way to do it so thanks for that and uh, thanks for your time today right. and we look forward to seeing uh, all the cool stuff in the future with you awesome thanks guys uh that's cool cool, cool. all right thanks uh, so much